Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing the long awaited, highly requested mixed girl tag. This is probably the most asked question on my channel of all time. Everybody wants to know whether or not I'm mixed and everybody wants me to do the mixed girl tag. So here it is for you guys. <laughs> so enough talking. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. I have everything written down here so I don't forget anything. So the first question is, what are you mixed with? I am mixed with African American, German, Welsh, and Native American. My dad is white and my mom is black, in short. Question number two, what ethnicity have you been most mistaken for? Um, I have been mistaken for so many different things. I swear people just make things up sometimes. I've been mistaken for Middle Eastern, Mexican, Native American. When my hair is straight, I get Native American a lot. Um, Jamaican, I've had South African. I get Hawaiian a lot, but I've been mistaken for a whole bunch of different things. Is your hair curly or straight? My hair is curly. <laughs> This eyelash is literally not even attached, but we're just going to roll with it. Hopefully it doesn't fall off throughout this video. Number four, was coming from different backgrounds challenging growing up? And I wouldn't really say that coming from a different background was challenging. It was more just kind of like odd not being the norm, I guess. So my family lived in a predominantly white suburb and we were kind of like the first black family in the neighborhood, even though nobody mentioned that or anything, it was still kind of one of those things that we were very aware of it because, I mean, there weren't any kids that looked like us around. And it was kind of like that all throughout growing up. We were kind of always the black kids everywhere we went. The one thing that I would say was challenging, I don't even want to say it's challenging, it was more annoying than anything else, was when I would go to activities or school or something like that and my dad would pick me up. And since my dad is white, people would always assume that I was adopted. And I'm not adopted, that's my dad. But I, I would get that all the time, all throughout growing up. Oh, are you adopted? Oh, are you adopted? Oh, who is that? Or, you know, I remember one time we were down south visiting uh, my family and we went to go to the pool and my dad went to take us to go to the pool and this guy refused to let my dad take us to the pool because he was like, those clearly aren't your kids. So I think that that was the most annoying part. Even to this day, it annoys me. Like, we'll be standing in line and they'll be like, sir, we can help you over here. And I'm like, that's my dad. No, he's with us. And I think it's just kind of challenging in general growing up in an area that's predominantly white, not having any kids that look like you because I feel like when you aren't the norm, being brought into a situation where, you know, you're the oddball out, people ask questions or people, you know, kind of make you feel like you're like you're an alien. That's the be <laughs> the best way I want to like describe it. Kind of tell or sense that they weren't around a lot of black people in their lifetime. Like it was like a rare sighting, a black person in the suburbs. But yeah, that would be the only thing that I would say was a challenge growing up. Question number five, which background do you embrace more? I definitely don't embrace one over the other. I embrace them both equally. Number six, have you ever been teased for being different? I remember when I was in elementary school, there was this girl, this black girl, and she used to always kind of like make comments to me that I like wasn't fully black or like my dad is white or things like that. I am the type of person who thinks about things logically. So when people say, oh, you have a white dad or a black mom, I'm like, okay, no kidding. Like, obviously, like, those are my parents. Like, what else is due? Like, I don't really listen to that. As I got older, I wouldn't necessarily say people would tease me, but it was like, again, like, being the only black kids in a predominantly white area like people were just so uncomfortable like I remember there was this period when people were always making black jokes like anytime we were around and I'm always like okay like why is it always 
when we are around that people have to like make these black jokes or I used to always get oh you're not white enough or you're not black enough oh like you shouldn't like that because you're black or you shouldn't like that because you act too white it was always like you can't do this or you should do that like I was always kind of like put into these little molds of like how I should act and I was like well I am who I am like I'm gonna like what I like regardless of what you say but it's just odd that you always have to say that when I'm around okay I'm black I used to get really weirded out by it like why are people so uncomfortable people just don't get it and now I'm like okay I used to always think well if people mention that I don't want to be the person who's like always like nitpicking like don't make a black joke around me I don't have a sense of humor or like don't say that about me that's not funny but then it gets to a point where it's like that's not funny and if you don't correct it then those people think that it's okay to continue to act that way and continue to point those things out when you're around and if they're doing it to you they could be doing it to somebody else and it's like that can really tear somebody down who is mixed or who you know isn't comfortable with their you know racial identity and I was in high school early college I was really kind of like struggling with that like where do I stand like I don't want to be the angry black woman but at the same time like I don't want to I don't want people to just think that the way that they act and the things that they say are okay and now I'm kind of to the point where I'm like if you don't say something like silence is betrayal and that's something that as of recently I have really discovered and come to understand it's like silence is betrayal and if you don't stick up for the things that are right and the things that are important to you then nobody else will people are ignorant that's the best way that I can put it people are just so ignorant and people just don't want to change and those are the same people who are like well black people need to stop whining like they need to stop whining and you know black people are being shot you know they must have been doing something wrong they need to stop whining they need to act better like those are the people who say those people and oh they or black people trying to you know always use the stereotype and it's like I am not a stereotype I am my own person I love Harry Potter I love Lord of the Rings I love Game of Thrones I do not like fried chicken I don't eat chicken at all like I don't like Kool-Aid it is far too sweet for me like those are stereotypes I always thought that I was caught in between two sides of the argument like people are always like well you need to you act white or you talk white and I'm like what is talking white can somebody please explain to me what talking white is because I just talk how I talk I talk like a normal human being I speak in proper sentences you are implying that the proper way of speaking is associated with being white so only white people can speak proper and it's like it drives me insane when people say that to me like you talk so white like you're practically white or like you're like a white girl and it's like I get it from both sides I get it from black people and I get it from white people like I literally get it from both sides like oh you you're not black enough or you're not white enough or you're too white it's like no I'm me I am half black I am half white and I'm going to be who I am and I don't really care what you have to say about it but at the same time don't try to say that oh I I am pretty for a black girl or I'm pretty because I'm mixed or I talk white those are all very ignorant things to say and people need to stop saying that by I get comments from black white purple people all on my video saying oh you're you're really pretty are you mixed <laughs> what does me being mixed have to do with the fact that you think I'm pretty like it has nothing to do like you are saying that the only reason that I could be pretty is because I'm mixed that is exactly what you're saying if you want to give somebody a compliment just give them a compliment say you know you're pretty I think you're pretty don't add a qualifier onto that like oh you're pretty but you must be mixed or you couldn't be black you're too pretty have you 
walked outside in the world have you met people outside of your little bubble because there are so many beautiful white black asian hispanic people out there in the world and it's like we just need to see people as people sorry i'm going on a huge rant but yeah sorry i'm gonna stop rambling now <laughs> number seven have you ever been ashamed of being multiracial i have never been ashamed of being multiracial it's who i am there's absolutely nothing to be ashamed of there number eight do you feel like being mixed has its benefits i feel like the benefits of being multiracial is you have more of a well-rounded view of the world you see two completely different sides you can understand both sides of the argument i get to see my dad's point of view my dad a white republican from a white family and my mom a black democrat from a black family, I get to see both sides. We get to have <laughs> nice conversations, but at the end of the day, like we all still love each other. Number nine, what makes being multiracial a beautiful thing? I think that ties into what I said in number eight is just being well-rounded and seeing things from different points of views. Okay, sorry, my camera died. <laughs> But my last question is, any advice to people who struggle with their multiracial identity? The only thing that I can say is that you should not ever be ashamed of who you are. I would say that if you're like me and you're struggling with people accepting the fact that you're black or accepting the fact that you're mixed and you're not black but you're not white, and be who you want to be act the way that you want to act and don't listen to anybody who is trying to tell you differently you are who you are be who you are that is the best thing you can do in your whole entire life is just be who you are just be yourself that's really the only thing that i can say if you guys have any stories or if you have any advice for people who are multiracial who are having a hard time please leave it down in the comments box open a line of communication you know support each other only love in the comments of this video please guys so if you guys have any questions comments anything like that make sure to leave them down in the comment section and don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe for new videos every week thank you guys so much for watching i will see you guys in my next video bye guys